ever imagine being offered a wife as part of like a political alliance? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not my idea of romance. No, not exactly a rom-com. Right. right. But that's exactly the kind of scenario we're diving into today. Really? Yeah. Anishinaabe society, fascinating stuff. We're talking alliances, family dynamics, all playing out in this incredible story we're about to unpack. I'm intrigued. What's the source? A story about Anishinaabe society, and it's more than just a story. We get real insights thanks to Blake DeBessage from McShaging First Nation. Okay, so this is rooted in authentic Anishinaabe perspectives. I like it. Set the scene for us. All right, so picture this. A massive summer gathering, families reuniting, ceremonies, the work. Sounds lively. Oh, it is. But beneath the surface, there's some serious strategizing going on. And that's where Bish, our protagonist, comes in. Bish, tell me about this guy. He's a skilled hunter, more at home in the quiet of the woods than, you know, negotiating treaties. Ah, so more comfortable with a bow and arrow than a peace pipe. Exactly. But his life's about to get a whole lot more complicated. See, he's from the Crane Dotum. Hold on, Dotum, for those of us unfamiliar. Right, sorry. Dotums are like clans, each with a specific role in an Anishinaabe society. Think of them like diplomats or advisors, holding serious weight. Okay, so Bish is from a family of leaders, influencers, got it. Exactly, and his dad, a respected leader of the Crane Dotum. So picture this, Bish is prepping for the upcoming sturgeon harpooning. Wait, sturgeon harpooning, that sounds intense. Oh, it's a whole thing, we can get into it later, but for now, back to Bish. So he's with his dad, and his dad drops this bombshell. The marriage proposal. Yes. To secure an alliance with the Potawatomi people, Bish's father has promised his son's hand in marriage to the Potawatomi chief's daughter. Whoa, talk about pressure. Right. And remember, Bish is this quiet, solitary guy. This is huge GE. And from what you're saying, these alliances weren't entered into lightly? Oh, absolutely not. And there's a hint in the document that there might be some tension brewing with another group, the Mohawk people. So the stakes are even higher than we initially thought. Way higher. And Bish, he's caught right in the middle. I can't imagine what's going through his mind at that moment. Talk about a life-altering summer gathering. Yeah. <laughs> An <laughs> understatement. So Bish is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Definitely. And it gets even more complex when you consider how Anishinaabe society works. You know? Yeah. To really grasp the weight of this decision, we need to understand the driving forces in their society. Yeah, their societal structure was so different from ours. So break it down for us. What made Anishinaabe society tick? Well, picture a system built around these groups called dotums. Dotums. Yeah, like clans. Each dotum had a specific role to play. Think of them as like essential parts of a big machine, everything working together. Okay, so if our modern society was organized around professions, like we'd have the builder's dotum, the teacher's dotum. Exactly, but with deeper cultural and spiritual significance. Right, because Bisha's crane dotum, they were known for leadership. But they didn't just make decisions on their own, did they? Nope, not at all. We've touched on this idea of consensus in Anishinaabe decision-making. Right. How did that work in practice? Was it like everyone gets a vote? It's more nuanced than that. Think less majority rules and more like striving for harmony. Interesting. Yeah, decisions weren't just dictated from the top down. They were reached through discussions, deliberations. Everyone had a voice. Wow. So even as a young man, Bish's opinion matters in this system. Precisely. And the story highlights this beautifully. There's a small detail. The use of a wampum belt during the negotiations with the Potawatomi. Oh, you mean those belts with the intricate beadwork? I've always found them beautiful, but I'm guessing they're more than just decoration. Way more. Wampum belts held immense cultural and political significance for the Anishinaabe. Really? Yeah. Imagine them as their version of written contracts or historical records. So they're recording these vital agreements and historical events. But in a way that's also deeply meaningful to their culture. And when that Potawatomi speaker uses a wampum belt, it emphasizes how serious this proposed alliance is. Wow, so it's like saying, this is a binding agreement. Talk about pressure, poor Bish. This is way bigger than just a marriage proposal. Right, it gives us a glimpse into a completely different way of life. And this respect, this balance, it wasn't just some lofty ideal. It was woven into every aspect of Anishinaabe society. And speaking of respect and balance, there's that part in the story about Noden, 
Bisha's little brother and the injured dog. Yeah, I remember that. It felt symbolic somehow, like it was connected to these Anishinaabe values. Exactly. That small interaction reveals a lot about their deep respect for all living things. So it's not just about respecting elders or those in positions of authority. It's about respecting all creatures. Absolutely. Animals, plants, the land, it's all interconnected in their worldview. It reminds me of how they harvested wild rice, using yeah. those specific roles, the polar and the knockers. Right. The polar would guide the canoe and the knockers would carefully harvest the rice. They only took what they needed, ensuring there was enough for future generations. Such a contrast to how we often exploit natural resources today. It's a powerful reminder that true prosperity isn't about taking everything you can get. It's about maintaining that balance. It's about sustainability. It really makes you think. So we have Biche caught between his own desires and this monumental decision, all within a society that values consensus, respect for all living things. The complex situation, to say the least. So here we are. Biche is caught in this whirlwind of tradition, politics, and personal desires. And the story doesn't give us easy answers, does it? Not at all. It's like, what happens next? Does Biche speak up, risk causing a rift? Or does he go along with it all for the greater good? It really makes you consider the complexities of leadership in a consensus-based society, right? Absolutely. It's easy for us to say, Beesh, just follow your heart. But when the fate of your entire community is potentially at stake... The decision becomes a lot more difficult. And I think that's what makes this story, this deep dive, so powerful. It's not about judging Beesh. It's about understanding the weight of those traditions, the pressures he's facing. Exactly. It's about recognizing that leadership isn't always about having all the answers. Sometimes it's about making incredibly tough choices, choices that might even require personal sacrifice. And that's something that resonates just as strongly today, even in our modern world. A hundred percent. So as we wrap up our exploration of Anishinaabe society through Bish's story, we're left with this profound understanding of their values the way they made decisions, that balance between individual needs and the needs of the community. It's pretty remarkable. It really is. And it makes you think, how can we incorporate some of these values into our own lives? Respect, balance, consensus. These are things we could all use a little more of, wouldn't you say? For sure. And sometimes the most important lessons aren't the ones that give us all the answers. Sometimes it's the stories that leave us with lingering questions, you know? the ones that make us pause and reflect on our own values and choices. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder that. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into Anishinaabe society. Until next time.